Good evening folks and welcome to this Wednesday evening service of Compline. Um, if you are listening in tonight on the telephone service then you are extremely welcome. Um, can I encourage you that if you're listening or you're watching and um, to let other people know about this. Um, I'm hoping that at some point that we can actually have these midweek services um, in, in the church with people. Um, so uh, I know it's been of great value to many people through this lockdown period and so we want to continue that. Can I also encourage you um, to sign up for uh, our church services on Sunday. It seems strange that you have to sign up, but it's to know our uh, numbers really for contact tracing. Um, please do that and you can do that on the website or else by phoning the, the telephone number the, um, which, is, which is my mobile 07808 479 649 um, and uh, it'd be great to see you back. We've put enough controls in place which should assure you of um, the safety aspect uh, of us returning to church. And remember, um, if you can, if you've got a, a, a face mask, to bring that with you. Uh, if you don't bring a face mask, that's okay because we have uh, masks at the back. Um, there are exceptions, obviously, due to uh, where people have health conditions where they wouldn't be able to wear a mask, and we totally understand that. But if you're able uh, and healthy enough to wear one of these, then remember you're protecting uh, everyone by doing that. Our Wednesday evening services now are going to be uh, Compline uh, each and every Wednesday. And so you can find that on page 154 of your prayer books if you've got one. If you don't, then you can go on to our parish website and under the latest resources section, you'll see that you can download the Compline service. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Brethren, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm uh, appointed for this evening is Psalm 35, and we're going to read verses 1 through to verse 10. Contend, O Lord, with those that contend with me. Fight against those that fight against me. Take up shield and buckler and rise up to help me. Draw the spear and bar the way against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my life be shamed and disgraced. Let those who plot my ruin fall back and be put to confusion. Let them be as chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord thrusting them down. Let their way be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For they have secretly spread a net for me without a cause. Without any cause they have dug a pit for my soul. Let ruin come upon them unawares. Let them be caught in the net they led. Let them fall in it to their destruction. Then uh, will my soul be joyful in the Lord and glory in his salvation. My very bones will say, Lord, who is like you? You deliver the poor from those that are too strong for them, the poor and needy from those who would despoil them. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our appointed reading for this evening is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, 
verses 1 through to 13. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him, and there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him, and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west, and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion Jesus said, Go, let it be done, for you according to your will or to your faith, and the servant was healed in that hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a little bit of context if you don't already know it, but in those times that Jesus lived in, um, the Romans um, were hated by the Jews because they represented everything that uh, the Jews stood against, including domination by a foreign body and pagan beliefs and practices. Why then did Jesus not only warm warmly receive a Roman centurion, but praise him as a model of faith and his confidence in God. You see, in the Roman world, the position of a centurion was extremely important. He was an officer in charge of, as the name sent comes, a uh, hundred soldiers. And in a certain sense, he was kind of like the backbone of the military army. The cement which kind of holds the army together. Uh, I, there was an ancient writer in uh, around the times of Jesus called Polybius. And listen to what he said uh, about the role of the centurion. They must not be so much venturesome seekers after danger as men who can command, steady in action and reliable. They ought not to be over anxious to rush into the fight, but when hard pressed, they must be ready to hold their ground and die at their posts. So the centurion who came to Jesus was not only courageous, but he was full of faith. He risked all of the criticism and ridicule um, that he could have possibly received from going and speaking and seeking help from a preacher of Galilee. Uh, and then there was the mockery that would have even come from the Jews. But actually, he came to Jesus and he approached him with confidence and with humility. He was an extraordinary man because he cared and loved for his slave. And in the Roman world, slaves were treated like the dirt of the earth. The centurion was also an extraordinary man of faith. He wanted Jesus to heal his slave who he cared for. And Jesus commands him, or sorry, commends him for his faith and immediately grants the request. So what, where does that leave us tonight? Well, are we willing to suffer the abuse, the criticism and the ridicule if we are to follow the practice of our faith? And whenever we need help, and I can assure you, after a day today where I have buried someone uh, in 
a day where uh, we as a parish have received uh, further news of, of issues of health uh, between, in, in our parishioners. Whenever you need that help, do you approach Jesus and do you approach him with the same faith that the centurion had? Amen. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thy God of truth. We're now going to follow the words of the hymn before the ending of the day, and the melody, the tune will, will now be played. Keep me as the apple of an eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. We say together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thy, thy servant, depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. We affirm our faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, 
to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. We move now into a time of confession. And just as we do so, let's not just move straight into these words, but let's reflect on maybe areas of our lives where we have fallen short of God's standards. There will always be things in our lives where we have, um, where we've let him down. And it doesn't matter whether you are a caller or whatever you do, all have fallen short of God's standards. Not because his standard is just uh, just so high and, and, and his standard is that he is holy and therefore we are with sin, but it is just a case that uh, we have fallen into sin and we run into danger every day of our lives. Um, it is very hard to resist it. Um, uh, but yet we have the opportunity to turn away from it. And that word metanoia, that word repent, is so important because it's not that we just come and say sorry tonight, but we say sorry with the attitude that actually we're going to work hard at changing our character, changing our behavior, changing the words we say, changing the things that are in our mind that we're thinking about, changing everything about us. So whether it's that um, rude joke, whether it's that thought, whether it's the comment that we make behind someone's back, whether it's that we hold back in terms of our generosity to the work of God, whatever those things are, we come tonight and we're not just saying sorry with a bit of words on a bit of paper. We're saying, Lord, we're bringing these things and we're going to bring them with an attitude that we're going to turn these things around after, right, after we, we say these. So let's take a moment to reflect on particular areas of our lives where we're determined to work with God's Spirit guiding us and directing us uh, to be a different person, changed, um, renewed by his forgiveness. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we have sinned in thought, uh, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins. Deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. Let us pray. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from thy heavenly throne. Illuminate the darkness of this night with thy celestial brightness. And from the children of light banish the deeds of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, this place and our homes. And drive away all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell therein to preserve us in peace, and may thy blessing be upon us evermore. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And tonight as we've been thinking about the faith of the centurion, let us bring in a moment of our own silent prayer, in faith coming to God, the great healer, uh, who, who wants to heal us. We don't understand why at times it doesn't work out the way we think it does. And yet God is always doing a healing work in us. But let us come in faith with those issues now that are in our hearts for us or for uh, friends or family and bring them to him now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thy, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this night and forevermore. Amen.